name is Imran and uh, today I'm going to talk about how to integrate Insta Mojo using Node.js, React, MongoDB, so basically using Mon. Uh, just to warn you, this tutorial is not for beginners, uh, but if you do want to watch it, you can do that. I will try to explain as much as possible. Uh, if you've reached this stage, I'm assuming you already know, uh, you have got good knowledge about Node.js, React if you're integrating a payment gateway okay so I'll go ahead and show you the demo first and then I'll show you what codes you need to write so let's begin then so this is my page where I have a package that a user can buy okay so I'll just go ahead and click on buy and the cost of this is 100 rupees okay and you can see it takes me to the Insta Mojo page where I'll be able to put my debit card I can put the information can put the debit card details of course this is the test environment so this is for testing and it will ask me for the security code which I will enter and I submit it and sure enough it takes me to a page which says thank you for making the payment uh, you can do whatever require uh, work you need to do after that you can go ahead and do that so what's happening is basically I'm taking the data uh, and uh, the price uh, the phone number the email and all of that information and and I'm going ahead and making an API request call to insta mojo uh, using the insta mojo node.js um, package npm package okay and then uh, after once I receive the request, I'm saving that information into the database that the payment has been successful. Okay, brilliant. So let's begin then how to do it. Okay, guys, so let's start with the front end first and then we go uh, ahead and discuss the back end. Okay, so I'm using React. I already have a project made. Uh, like I said, this this uh, tutorial is for not for beginners. So I'm sure you already have knowledge of uh, how to go ahead and install Node.js and how to create APIs, uh, how to use components using React, etc. So I'll just go dive right in, okay? So this is a page which is called the uh, bybit.js. This is where I have got uh, the button uh, which takes you to the payment gateway, uh, okay? And at this point, what I have done is basically imported React over here. And this is basically inside of my clients directory, inside of the source directory, and then inside of the components, I have a bit directory inside of which I have got the buy bit.js uh, component that I have created. Okay. So over here, what I've done is I've imported React. And I've uh, imported component from React. Then I've imported connect, uh, prop types, uh, navbar footer and banner all of this is are uh, related to my project it's up to you if you don't use it it's completely fine because uh, this is related to my project so you can ignore this part and then i'm uh, importing xus as well um, because i'll be using xu to make request from the uh, react uh, to the backend api okay so make sure you go ahead and install all of this. So install the React, install uh, npm install React Redux, uh, npm install prop types, npm install Xeos. So you can do all of that. I will not be showing that how to install it. I'm sure you already know that. Okay. Then I'm creating a class by bid. I'm extending component uh, with it. Inside of it, I have a render function. I can ignore this bit right now. Okay, and then I have a return function inside of which I'm just calling my uh, navbar component to get me the navbar, then the banner. You can, all, of course, ignore all of this part. It'll, this will be specific to your project. What the main thing I want you to focus on is this part right here, which is the button. Okay, so this button basically, which is the buy now button. Okay, so this button over here, uh, we have set an event on that. When this button is clicked, call this function okay so this is my buy now button okay so over here I've defined this function and in a moment we'll be writing uh, the function what it does basically the job of this function will be is that when that button is clicked then uh, the API request will be made uh, to the backend API which you'll be making in some time okay and that will be taking us uh, redirecting us to the insta mojo uh, live link okay uh, for the payment and over here, I'm just exporting this uh, particular uh, component. I'm just doing map state to props using connect. Inside of which, I'm just using my auth state dot auth. Basically, this is going to give me the state of the Redux, which I have it here. 
if I go to Redux. So over here I have the auth and everything. This is related to my project for the auth authentication. I'm sure you have it for yourself as well. Okay, and then I'm using uh, bybit.prop types uh, and I'm setting the auth prop types is required. I'm just saying that this auth is required basically. Uh, this may not be relevant to your project, but I'm just saying what has been happening over here. Okay, brilliant. Uh, and I'm just pulling out the user from this dot props dot auth. So I'm just pulling out the user from here. If you check, come over here. Inside of the auth, I have the user. I've got the user data and everything. Okay, great. So coming back, what we're going to do now is we'll go ahead and build an API uh, using the package, which is Insta module Node.js. If you go onto their site, and if you just search the npm package which is insta module node.js you will see all of this how to install it so you just have to go uh, to your project so i'm just going to go there so i'm into my project's root directory all i have to do is just paste this npm install insta module node.js and i just hint enter okay i'm not doing that because i've already installed it so that's completely fine okay so once that is installed let's have a look it's saying that you have to do a variable insta require insta model node.js you could you have to do all of that so we're going to do that into an api file okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and go to server.js which is my main file main file of node.js okay so i've got different things going on over here but you can do that as well uh, you can go ahead and install express include that you can in install mongoose and include that you may be using a different uh, database I'm using Mongo so that's why I've included that okay and then uh, you can also include the uh, sorry you can go ahead and say router express dot router then app is equal to express basically to use express for routing okay and then app dot use I've got different things going on over here just ignore all of that just you can focus on uh, basically this part which is bid okay so i'm saying bid require routes api bid okay so i'm going to go ahead and create a, a file inside of the apis in node.js so this is my project root directory i will go to routes apis and i've created a file called bid.js okay so inside of bid.js uh, we will go ahead and use this package okay so we're going to include uh, the express over here. We'll say require express, then require the router is equal to express dot router. We'll include the mongoose uh, because we need that. Then guys, it says that uh, require the insta mojo. So we're just going to do that into our route API that we're creating here. So let's do that. I'm just going to use const over here instead of let. Okay. And I'm guys, I'm just doing copy pasting to save time because it, otherwise the video will be too long. Okay, so then we're going to create a route basically. We're saying router dot post, uh, and then this will go to pay. Okay, so the actual API will go to. I'll just share that with you. So if you go to server dot js, we are including this bid basically this part, right? We're saying cons bid is equal to require routes API bid. So routes then api then bid so basically we're including that here into our main server.js which is main node.js uh, file okay and then over here we are saying app dot we, you can ignore these uh, four ones just focus on this one okay then we're saying app dot use api bid and then we are saying bid which means that the api that we create inside of uh, the bid.js will take me for example right here so the api will be api uh, slash bid slash pay so it will go to this particular url okay you can write this directly into server.js also but i prefer to do it this way because you know i want to keep things simple okay so let's continue further so what do we need next okay so guys the next thing it talks about that go ahead and set your keys so we're going to use this So inside of this route that we are creating, we're going to go ahead and use this. Okay. I need the API key and auth key. So where do I get that from? I'll go to that, go to my Insta Mojo account. So I'll go to test Insta 
test dot insta mojo i think this is what it is right yeah Yep, this is the one. Okay, so I've gone to test.instamojo.com slash integrations. Okay, I'm already logged into your, uh, my account. I'm sure you can log into your account and, and reach this page which says API and plugin. So click on this. There you will be able to see your API key and auth token. So we'll just copy that. In the live scenario, you will not use test. You will have your uh, API key for the uh, live uh, site as well. But this is for the test in, testing environment so we can see the functionality working. Okay, so I'm just going to copy this one. And I will just go ahead and uh, paste it. <clears throat> and similarly, I will copy the token as well. And I'll just paste it here. Okay. So we've done the two steps, uh, which is including the Insta from the Insta Mojo Node.js package, which we have uh, just installed using npm install. And then we have also set the key. The next thing is that it gives you these set of uh, options. So it says create payment request, see all payment links. So we'll go for this one because we want to create a payment request. Then it says, say variable data is equal to new Insta payment data. So we'll just use this. I'll go over here. Uh, not in, I'll just close the server.js because we don't need it now. Okay. So next thing is we'll just do this. Okay. We'll just say constant instead of let. Because I'm using ESX. Next thing we need to do, guys, is also define whether it's a test mode or not. So if you scroll down, I don't think anywhere it talks about how to do it. It might somewhere. Yeah, here it is. Here it is. Okay. So. You will go ahead and use this code and set this to true if you are using testing environment. Otherwise, if you don't use this line of code, then that means it will automatically assume that you are going to be using it for live production environment. Okay, so I'm just going to pass this information here just to ensure that it uses the um, testing environment. Okay, the next thing we need, guys, if you scroll up and go back to create payment request. It says that it needs the data and everything. It needs the purpose, the amount, redirect URL. Why do we need all of that information? So I want you to go ahead and share that with you. If you go to the documentation of the Insta Mojo, okay, I'll just share that with you. So guys, if you go to this link, document.instamojo.com slash talks, and if you scroll up where it talks about creating a payment request, let's see create a request yes here it is okay and if you click on node.js it basically gives you uh, information that what code you can use to include it uh, you know to go ahead and uh, call this API to be able to do some of the transactions so basically uh, the package that we are using the insta mojo node.js package it's doing just that so even if if you go and open the node.js file so if I go to um, let's say node modules if I go to insta mojo i know guys it's taking some time but it's important you understand how these things are working in depth so that you will be able to make changes and do things on your own so this is the one you can see there is one file that these are uh, these guys are using which is insta mojo.js if you just open this file you'll be able to see that they're actually using the same uh, kind of code they've just modified it, but using the same kind of code that the insta mojo uh, API asks you to do that. They're doing request, require request. That's what's happening over here. Then it gives you uh, a URL for test and also gives you a URL for the uh, live environment. So you can see that this URL, which is from HTTPS up until 1.1, this is the URL that these guys are using uh, over here. And then uh, they are using the test or production environment you can see that this is the function is sandbox mode that's a function that we had called remember over here is sandbox mode right if you set this to true then these guys are using a test otherwise if it's false then they are using for production right and then they are also appending this payment request uh, uh, to this particular api and that's what's happening over here if you check payment request right after this url it's payment request so they are appending payment request to this particular URL, right? 
so basically this is what they are using and the reason why i've got you to this particular site uh, the documentation of insta mojo to see what are the data actually they required in the payload so if you notice this um, this module that they are using they are also using the payload so you can see that this is the um, yeah so you can see that the payment data purpose amount currency buy a name email phone all of that information and that th that's exactly what we have here as well purpose amount phone buy a name redact so all of the information so bas basically they are using making use of this code and they've just made our job easier by providing us with the set of functions that we can just call and and do the job for us okay so going back to their api now this was just a brief summary of what this uh, what this module is doing because uh, you know it doesn't really explain all of the information very clearly so so i had to actually go to that particular uh, their file to understand what exactly they are doing to be able to uh, you know integrate insta mojo onto it and i couldn't find any videos online so i thought of making one for you guys okay so going back uh, to what we we're discussing <clears throat> so if you go back over here onto the uh, insta mojo node.js documentation so now it talks about data dot purpose data dot amount so basically what they're saying is get me all of this information uh, from here uh, everything is not mandatory what is mandatory is a purpose and amount okay however when you will go ahead and uh, you know create a request it is better to include the other fields as well is because if you don't then when you click on the uh, submit uh, when you click on buy it will ask you to enter that information on the uh, insta mojo side so rather than doing that asking the user to enter it we take all the information here itself okay so i'm just going to use this uh, but because we need all of that information we are going to create an api which which goes ahead and passes this information rather than putting it manually of course we wouldn't need to put it manually we would need that data from the user right so how do we do that we go back to our bybit.js remember we had created this function that when you click on this button which, which is basically this button right if you click on this button then uh, this function will be called which is uh, on by non uh, on sorry on by now click okay so this function is attached and this will be called and this is where we'll be you know preparing all the data and we'll be going ahead and creating an xuse request to uh, make a request to to this particular uh, you know api that we are creating okay so let's do that then so guys the first thing i'm going to do is basically get the user from the uh, state.auth uh, remember i had shown you that uh, we had the auth over here Redux state yeah inside of auth i have the user i'm going to pull out this user okay so how do we put that so let's do the object restructuring in es6 so i'm going to say const user is equal to this dot props dot auth which is basically coming from here okay and this is going to pull out the user from the auth object okay so basically this is going to give me the user okay so if you refresh it if i go to console just ignore everything else just look for the user okay so now if i click on this button this function on by now click gets called and then it should give me the user so you can see that it's pulled out the user from redux right if i go back to redux i can see i have the user and this is the user all the information is there right and uh, <clears throat> it's got all the all the data here okay so we've got the user so why do we need user so that we can get the email address we can get the uh, you know id user id name all of the information basically okay great now um, the next thing we need to do guys is basically uh, prepare a data so that we can pass it to the xuse request so let's do that then i'm going to create a constant called data and set the purpose called the bit payment you can set it any, anything that you like amount in my scenario i have a fixed amount 100 in your scenario it could be a form that will be probably you know filling this information you can just set it to what uh, according to your requirement then by a name user dot name because remember in user we have the um, name basically right we have the name here so user dot name then email user dot email gives me email phone number user dot id gives me the user id 
So if I check over here, you can see user.id will give me id, user.name will give me name, user.email will give me email. So all of that information I'm putting that over here. Then it talks about the redirect URL. Okay. So where would it be redirected after the payment has been made? So this is the API that I'll be will be creating in some time, uh, which is the Node.js API. That's why the port is 5000. API bid callback user and in the query string we are passing user ID is equal to this user ID, user dot ID, which is basically this id user id the reason why we are passing that so that we can save that information in, with the users uh, module okay in the database webhook url is just webhook and all of the information you can see if you go to the create request basically purpose amount phone buyer name all of that information is being taken from here right great uh, perfect so you can use that uh, i will be putting this code for you guys so you can always take help from that you don't necessarily need to type everything okay so let's do that then okay so now we need to pass this data and we need to create an excuse request so let's do that okay guys so what i'm doing over here is i'm creating a request excuse dot post okay because remember this was the post request that we had created we want to hit this api api slash bid slash pay uh, in the um, bid.js that we had created right so we'll say excuse dot post we'll hit this route okay and then we'll pass in the data that we have created over here this is the payload data okay and then we sing dot then so we get a callback we get a promise okay and then response in the response uh, we will get the data in response dot data okay and i'm just going to comment this out we don't need this just yet okay brilliant uh, response that data and then catch if there are any errors then just console log that particular error okay brilliant so what's, what's going to happen is uh, once the button submitted then it this is going to post uh, basically this is going to hit this api and pass all of this data to this api so now over here in the route that we have created we have got the access to request.body and we will be able to access everything that we are passing here so request.body.purpose will give me the purpose request.body.amount will give me this amount so in the request we'll be able to get all the uh, data that's been passed to this url uh, when this uh, call to this api route is made okay so let's continue further then what are we going to do with that data okay so coming back again to this uh, documentation you can see that it it talks about get all the data and then set the redirect url okay so we're going to do, do just that again guys i'll just copy paste just save time we'll paste it so all i'm doing over here is the same thing that these guys are asking me us to do just do data dot purpose data dot amount and set its value and then set the redirect url okay so i'm saying say data dot purpose is equal to request dot body dot purpose remember as i explained to you we are passing this data purpose so we're going to get that request dot data dot amount so we're going to get the amount that we're passing over here similarly we get the buyer name redirect url email phone number uh, send email we are setting it to false because we don't want to send email once the payment is made webhook we are setting to this send sms no we don't want to send sms we'll set that to false allowed repeat payment false which means repeat payment will be allowed okay okay guys uh, next up if you talk about say set redirect url we're not doing that is because we're already setting the redirect url over here okay and remember we had passed the redirect url over here so we've got that there Great. What's, what is the next thing? It says if create payment data function error response. So do this basically. So let's do that. So I'm just going to take that data, take that code, bit of code and just paste it over here. Uh, so this is exactly the same code that they're asking us to put. Here you'll pass data. So remember we have passed data over here. So this is the data that we're passing. Error then response. We're going to get response once the request is complete. If there is an error, uh, then you won't get you will get some error basically and if there is a response and if it's successful you will get the response so instead of doing console.log which they're doing over here as a response i'm doing response.status.json okay so that i can see that data all right so let's have a look so what i'm going to do is basically <clears throat> go over here and click on buy and let's see what happens
okay i think we forgot the one line of code which is module dot exports uh, is equal to router so that router can pick it up okay server dot just can pick it up okay guys so what we're going to do now is we'll click on buy now and see what happens you click on buy now and notice what we get in response right we can see over here or we can just come over here and see it here i don't think this is consoling anything let's console it because it's showing sending as a response so we also console it over here if we console it we'll be able to see that onto our terminal as well okay so let's do that by now come back over here and here you go you can see in the response what have we got success is equal to true payment request you've got the id we've got the phone number and this is exactly what we passed earlier email by a name amount purpose expiry status and ms everything yep and this is exactly what we had passed over here so we are getting everything that we passed and plus some extra information right but we're not interested in everything at this moment what we're really interested in in this long url right because this is where we want to redirect the user to right once the user clicks on submit we pass all of the data to the uh, to the insta mojo api okay and we get in return as a response we get this long url we'll extract this long url from this and we will redirect the user to this particular url because that's where he'll be able to make the payment okay so let's go to, uh, go, to, go ahead and extract that now of course this is uh, into json format so first we need to uh, pass it out so we'll do that now okay guys so coming back to bit.js okay so we'll just paste it so what are we doing over here we are saying const response data this is the const that we have constant have created we're saying json.parse and the response that we've just got which, which i've just shown it to you over here we are parsing it and out of that we are extracting the payment request dot long url so remember over here we have payment request and then dot long url so response dot payment request dot long url right and that's what we're getting giving this that's what is going to give me the long url okay so if i just go ahead and console this out not here because i want to get it here okay let me just copy the cut this over here and paste it over here okay let's try it one more time I'll go over here click on buy now come back here you go so you can see that we've got the long url over here right this is the long url and we've got that in this particular constant redirect url so what we need to do now is basically send this redirect url to back to uh, the xus.post uh, that it, that request that we had made and we're going to get that as a response over here right so we're going to instead of passing the entire response because all we are interested in just the redirect url right so we'll just paste this and as a whatever you're going to do as a response dot uh, status dot json whatever you're going to send over here will be available to uh, xus.post dot post dot then in the response okay so let's try that if that's actually the case and uh, let's try that so i should be able to see that in console right let's clear the console by now and sure enough you can see in response we've got the url that has been sent back uh, using res.status.json right so we've got that all we have to do now is just redirect the user to that particular url and how are we going to do that we'll use window.location.hrf is equal to res.data what is res.data res.data is the url that i've just shown you this is the url where we need to redirect the user to and that's what we have got from the um, long url right so let's do that so now i can just clear this out if i click on buy now and you'll see the magic will happen in just a moment brilliant that's awesome guys congratulations so you have successfully redirected the user to the side and now you'll be able to see that over here it's saying the purpose of the payment bid payment because that's what we had entered over here if you would have put anything else that would have been shown over here the amount is showing rupees 100 why is because what that's what you gave over here it is if you don't specify the mobile number and user email then at this point there will be kind of a form over here asking the user to put his 
email and, and username which of course you wouldn't want him to do that is because he's already logged in and you don't want him to enter those information unnecessarily that's why we're passing that okay now you can click on debit card make the payment and everything else okay so uh so basically what's going to happen is once you make the payment once he makes the payment then you're going to get some kind of redirect url so it's going to be redirected where will it be redirected after the payment to this url that you have specified so it will go to that url and it will provide the request id uh into that url so you can you can make use of that and you can save the information in the database so since this video is quite long now i'll make another video the second part in which i will show you how to go ahead and create api for this redirect url and how to store all the information in the database okay guys i hope you enjoyed it i'll see you in the next video take care bye, -bye.